poop. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish if we haven't met and if we have met, welcome back. How are you? Seriously, how are you? For real? How is 2024 treating you so far? It is the 10th. I am just trying to clean up my table because as usual, there's stuff all over it. We've been dying. Um, none of it's in the shop yet, but it will be very soon. By the time you see this, it should be in the shop. The reason I need to clean the table off is I'm gonna move the warping mill over here and uh gosh a while ago I'm not sure how long I want to say maybe as much as two years but probably more like 18 months ago one of you I think it was a beer asked how to use a pre-wound warp that she wanted to buy online and how to get it on her rigid head loom. I don't, I couldn't even find a video on this. It's a really good question because getting a pre-wound one is good if you want it to be like super, super long of a warp and you don't have a good place to, um, <laughs> to, to direct warp it, that's a good way to do it. And then also, you don't have to buy a pre-wound warp, you can wind it yourself. And then transfer it to your rigid head loom. I couldn't find a video on it, there probably is one, but I couldn't find one. So we're gonna wind one. A while ago I mentioned that I have like all, all this hand spun and that I thought I should just warp my loom like for a scarf for like a bunch of scarves or a couple scarves in a row you can't really do a bunch because like they're like long i don't know it's probably going to end up being enough for three maybe three would be awesome i gotta do the math on it but i have a lot of this drops fable in the plain gray and i thought that would be good with a lot of colors because it won't really value wise it won't confuse your eye as much as black or white would that's a whole separate conversation that we should probably have sometime. <laughs> I have so many of those, don't I? But I have a ton of it. Okay, I did the math. These are each 224 yards. So that means like 900 yards here, roughly. That I didn't do the math on, but it's an, it's close enough to know for sure that I have enough. And according to the um, Weevolution calculator, blah, 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 I only need 8.2 yards of warp to do three scarves at 78 inches, which is six and a half foot scarves. I like them to be generous. I want it 10 inches wide. I want it at least six feet long because I don't want to have your skinny little chintzy scarf that I have to wrap around 15 times. No, we're gonna be generous, it's gonna be swooshy, it's gonna be great. So let's get the warping mill and we'll get started. Seventy five strands. I am going to chain it later because I'm scared to chain it right now. That's why it's going to take a few minutes and I want to hold it tight. And then also I will have to tie the cross before I can chain it. So I'm going to wait a little while. I'll do it later. Just want to be fresh when I do it. It's a couple days later. I did not mean to dress to match my warp, but here we are and i'm gonna chain it i am not gonna tie anything but the cross when you buy a warp this will be tied for you it needs to be tied so they will tie it for you i just need a couple ties here and i want to tie the front end as well so i need five so when you buy a warp this right here 
this cross that I, I wound into my warp will be tied and you'll need to see it you'll need to see and know that later so we're gonna start chaining it and I want to hold it so it's like really um, stays together while I'm doing that I just want you to see this so I'm not gonna let the tension off this warp I'm actually holding it with the back of this hand right now so I'll just kind of switch around the way that I hold it as I chain it and I'm gonna chain it kind of tight So as I go around, I'll just find a different way to hold it. Like now I'm holding it with the back of my arm while I go a little further. I think I wanna go this way instead. Yep. I'm gonna do that. I do not, again, wanna let that tension off. So I'm just finding a way to hold this thing as I come around and continue chaining. So I got to the last loop at the top when I was chaining right here and I put it up here and then I tied the warp to it. The one that was going over this um, peg because that will keep it from unchaining. See this right here? This is my tie and it'll keep it from unchaining. Like some people wind them, hang them on a wall or whatever and come back to them later. That'll save you. Like it won't un come undone. And then I can take my cross off. Okay. And my last loop. So we're ready to take this to the loom. I have never done this before you guys. I know in my brain how it should work, but I did not practice this. and. I always figure I'm going to make the newbie mistake or a newbie mistake and then you guys learn from it. And that's, I mean, <sighs> that's how I do it. The only thing you really need that isn't normal warping stuff, like of course you need warp separator paper, I use the mylar. You need two kind of smooth flat sticks. You can buy them, they're called lease sticks. You know, you don't really need to, you can just like you probably even could use dowels if you just drilled holes in each one but anyway and you need a dowel you'll see why okay so the reason why i said they need holes in them is that you'll end up tying them to each other some people use those notebook binder ring things kind of handy just slip it through the two and then clip it together but anyway i'm just going to tie them i tied the cross you all saw it. so what you have to do is put these sticks in the cross wait a minute that's the wrong one put the sticks in the cross that's one and then the other because you wound the warp like this you'll take the strings off the cross in order so it keeps the warp organized as you pull it off and thread it through your heddle in this case it's through your re I'm gonna retie this one together okay so what I learned is one string, you go top, top, and then, let me see, I want to make sure I get this right. Yeah, bottom, bottom. <clears throat> so you made like a double figure eight and then you tie them together and you want to like leave a little bit of space so that this will be spread out amongst your heddles to the full 10 inches and then as you warp it this will also kind of sort of help tension it.
So I'm gonna do the same thing on this end. I'm gonna point you down better so you can see. I literally just took a long piece of the cord that I like to use when I'm warping. I did run it through a hole first. And then on the way back through a slot, it probably doesn't matter which way it goes through on the way back. So it's, <clears throat> it's through the first hole on this and then through the reed around the back beam, okay? Then I brought this one back. I'm crossing over, so it's another figure eight. Going through the back one. Come on, my nails are too long for this. and then over the back beam. <clears throat> I'm gonna tie a square knot, square knot, sorry. I lost some of my tension. I just wanted to, um, float's not the right word, but I want it to hang right there. Does that make sense? I think it does. Okay, now we're gonna turn the loom around. It's a little bit hard for me to see, but you should be able to see it. Now that these two sticks are tied together and inside the cross, I can take the ties for the cross out. If you've ever watched the, the floor loom warping, <laughs> I always harp on not losing my cross because it keeps everything in order like this. And that's what you really need when you're transferring a warp from anything to a loom. Like however it got wound. Okay. And this is a nice way to do a longer warp. All right, I'm all untied, that didn't take long. Now, when I spread these out, Where's my big loop? So remember that big loop that we had uh, at the beginning of the warp? I tied that as well. That was at, on a peg all by itself. This is like the end of the loop. If I pull on both sides, this is the side that's gonna go through the reed. If I pull on both sides, I can suddenly see the exact order of the threads that I want, okay? So, I can undo this, hoop, this loop now. This is the end of the warp, the beginning end, if that makes sense. We go down here and we pull off the first two strands of this warp. And this will either be a loop Yep, it's a whole loop. So we're gonna pull it through. Because this warp is 10 inches, we wanna be five inches from the center. This is marked, that's why I have this tied on here so that it I know where the center is all the time and I just leave it. So I just need to measure five inches out and then pull that loop through the first slot. This part's actually gonna be really quick. So just let me just see where to start. So I pull this loop through, then I can just reach back over and do the same thing. Pull the next two strands off, they're going to form a loop, and it's really easy to see those two strands. Then come back, pull the next two off. And remember, there's not that many of these really, so especially now that we're doing them in pairs.
So I just have a few more to do. I wanted to try to get a good view of what I'm doing down when I'm separating this. So I can see the cross, I can see the next two strands. So I'm just pulling the second one. So that, see how that like pulls the whole loop over? So it's just super easy to grab that way. Okay, and like I said, I would have just one left. So that, I'm just gonna pull it through a slot, even though I'll have to transfer it to a, hoop, a loop later, or a hole later. Um, yeah, that whole tying it and everything took 24 minutes. So the next thing we're gonna do is take our dowel, and we are gonna need a couple pieces of string in a minute. So I'm gonna cut them first. Um, I'm gonna cut them about, I don't know, six inches probably. Okay. And then I'm gonna just set these to the side because I'm gonna need them in a minute. So then I'm gonna go through here and pick up each one of these loops on my dowel. So I just split each loop that's coming through the slot in front of me. Okay, the single had a loop on the peg at the end, so we want to catch that loop that was on the peg. Easy, right? And now, I just want to get all of these so that the loops, there's nothing like stuck. There we go. See how once I got it all like straightened out, I could just pull my dowel pretty smoothly straight out. So next thing we want to do, easy, is we want to tie it to our apron, uh, rear apron beam. It's not a beam, what do you call this thing? Rod, apron rod. <laughs> I'm gonna tie it quite close to the edge of the warp because I don't want the dowel to slip out. So we'll just quickly you can tie it pretty tight. Okay, one. Now I need to do the other side. I dropped my string. So if I was doing a wider one, I would also tie this at increments in the space, but 10 inches is not that wide of a warp. So I'm not gonna bother with that, but that is to make sure that as you're putting tension on this, it doesn't bow. Uh, I just know that with this narrower warp and on this particular dowel, it's not gonna, but you want to make sure that you're tied enough times that it won't bow. And then you can just, you just like split this and tie in it, if that makes sense, like in between two loops. So... All right, we did it. It's on there. And now I'm gonna put the brake on and wind it up just a hair, okay? Straighten it out. You can see this is spread out really nicely. It's looking good and I'm pretty darn excited right now. The tie we used for the least stick, we're gonna have to move it. I had originally tied them through a slot and a hole on the reed. I'm gonna move this so it's tied over the top of the reed because if I tie it to the back beam, I can't roll the warp up, duh. So probably should have done that in the first place, but it wouldn't be a big deal if you had to change it. I will put a note um, when I'm editing. So I'm tying it up through a slot and then over the reed so the loop goes over and through the slot. Okay, we can literally start winding now. I need my warp separators. I have just have these off to my side so I can grab one at a time. All right, everyone has seen me do this before. I'm 
I'm just gonna shimmy it under that warp and get it caught, right? Perfect, we got it caught. Now, remember where we tied that loop so it couldn't, the crochet chain couldn't undo? We let that go, drop the chain a little bit. I unchained it a little bit and then just pull it out. So I'm just pulling out here, see this with my other hand, some tension on it, but not crazy tension. You really don't need crazy tension. And then just start winding it on. See how easy that is? That's insane. Now I'm gonna unchain a little bit more, untwist it. Give it a little tug and then start winding it on. See, now I've come to the end of my separator. So let me get another warp separator sheet in here. and give it a little tug and then we just do it again just wind it on so now I'm all the way at the end you can see it I'm going to cut the ties that hold the least stitch on and take them off. If you'd rather tie them with a bow and just untie them, that's fine too. And now, if you've ever warped a rigid head of loom, you know, all you have to do is slay this reed and tie on and you're ready to weave. I'm super happy with how that went on. That was easy. If you want to be impotent, you got to look impotent. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I'm putting that in. I'm going to go with this one. I get to pick three. This is from one of those Franken bats that I made. It was like dark unicorn or something. Black, purples, mostly. What else do we like? Hmm. I'm going to fill my shuttles right off my swift because I don't think I need all 610 yards and if I ball it up then I would have to re-hank it and if I do it this way it'll just be in a smaller hank when it's done and I'll have you know less yarn just leftovers but they'll still be hanked. So The warp is like spread out in between the bundles, but up here, it looks pretty even now. I want to hem stitch, so I'm gonna leave, oh gosh, a bunch off the start. I wanna make sure I have enough, you know? Ready? I'm gonna do like maybe six or eight picks and then I'll 
income stitch. I'm almost done, so I thought I'd show you the fabric. It's looking really, really cool. Um, here is my shuttle with the rest of the yarn. This is probably even a little more than I need. I was down in the studio and this yarn called me from that shelf. So it is an into the world. I'll, I'll put the color away. It's another hand spun, of course. John picked the last color. I had three options out and he chose this one. It was called Love Story and it's Ramboulet. So we're gonna weave the last scarf. I'm excited to cut these off of here so it's okay. And it's kind of nice to be able to just do three back to back to back. Here's the start. Really cool. I'm gonna like this one, I can tell. Okay, I'm all done, so I'm gonna cut these off. Here is the third one. Oh my gosh. It's funny because I see it while I'm weaving, but it just looks so different when you can see the full perspective of it. Ooh. Oh my gosh, this one's long too. I love a long scarf. Okay, so that's the first one. Here's the bottom. Now here's the second one. This colorway is Drop It Like It's Hot. It was on White Face Woodland. It's by um, Into the World. So pretty. Especially if you like the more like fall color. So there's the end of that one. And here's the first one. It's Evil Unicorn. I don't know if you'll be able to see the sparkles and then it also has some shiny fibers in it, but it is real pretty. And some black. It's a finer gauge weave too, so it's just like a, a finer fabric. Okay, almost there. All right. I hope this helps somebody who might wanna purchase a warp either already dyed or just to make it easier for you to warp, maybe you don't have space. Maybe physically it's too hard to do direct warping. Um, I hope this helps somebody. I actually gave this one away um, as a giveaway on TikTok, so the winner will be getting it soon. I'm waiting for some other fiber that I dyed for her to dry, and as soon as it's dry, I can pack it all up. So, um, and I did end up leaving fringe on this one, just short fringe, and then um, it's really pretty. It's prettier in person even, but it's pretty. So it's a kind of a good way to use up my hand spun because the plain weave doesn't compete with the you know color changes in the hand spun yarn. Kind of nice. And then the second one I gave away as a gift to one of my friends. The whole time I was weaving it, I was thinking that it was like her colors that she always falls in love with. So we had lunch and I was like, I think you should just keep it. So while we were at lunch, I put it on the table and filmed it. So I'll show you that.
And then the third scarf is this one, which ugh, honestly, John picked the yarn. I gave him three options and he picked this one and I just love it. So um, I did weave the fringe back in on this one so it doesn't have fringe and I am gonna put it in the shop. I can't keep everything that I make. Anyway, I hope you're having a great week. I think next week, Friday, I am gonna do another bat making live like we have done before. We just did one, but I had done multiple ones previous to that. Uh, for members members only so I think we're gonna do it again it was really really fun and the way I had things set up this time made it much much easier for me I hope you guys are having a great January so far um, I know some of you are wondering we're okay I need to get spinning so I'll talk to you guys later thanks I love you bye <laughs>